Awesome. Welcome. We're so excited to be here. Please note that if you want to say hi, just go ahead into the chat. And I'm Jamie. Who's and I'm here? Sophie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, we'll give people a couple minutes. Um, we're just on the hour, so we'll give them a couple minutes, Sophie, and then we'll we'll dive into your new community plan. Yes, excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, just for people joining us, the chat on the right-hand side is a great place to say hi, uh, tell us what business you're in. And then beside that on the bottom – bar is ask a question. And so Sophie's going to take the lead on delivering your awesome content today. And I'm going to be checking the question bar and making sure that we're getting everything answered for you today, which is exciting. And yeah, we'll just give people a couple minutes. We got the note that Albania is opening up and things are getting open, which is so exciting. We're hoping here in Vancouver or in BC that things are going to be opening really soon for us as well, but we're not, crossed. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. Hello, hello. It's nice to see you today. Welcome. Okay, we have a few people joining, which is awesome. Yeah, I see a few more. Thanks for joining us. I know it's uh, tempting to get outside now that everything is open. Um, we're hoping in Vancouver that, that happens to us soon. <laughs> we're waiting. Very patiently. <laughs> All right. Well, Sophie, we're a couple minutes after. Um, do you want to get started? Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, just to make sure everyone knows that on the right-hand side bar, there's the chat. So feel free to tell us who you are and what business you run. We'd love to know. And then there's ask a question at the bottom, and I'll be monitoring that for questions, and we'll make sure that everything gets answered. So, Sophie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? and your background in community. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Sophie Bougeau. I am the community manager at Spring. Um, but before joining Spring, I was actually building communities both in corporate and for startups and entrepreneurs. Um, and I've been doing it for many, many years, more than I will uh, admit on this call. But um, mainly my focus is on building engaging um, online spaces that help people connect with one another and create those um, relationships that last for a long time. And I do it within a business setting. So I help people align their business objectives with these communities that they're creating so that they're not just putting in work and not getting any results for the business. Mm -hmm. um, at Spring, I'm responsible for the community experience that we are currently building, which launched last week to a few select uh, programs. Uh, more will be coming very soon, but really my job is to make sure that we create a space where everyone can share together um, and engage with one another because really the value of the network that we've built is the fact that you guys can all connect together. Um, so really, really excited about that. Awesome. Yeah. And my name is Jamie Smith. I work at Spring uh, launching their business resiliency program. And I also have a business called Thrive Art Studio that I run with another artist. And we support female 
artists in community. So we have an in-person and online where artists meet monthly to talk about the ups and downs of being professional artists. And we have an online community space for them to connect as well. So I've been about five years with Thrive. So Sophie and I often have great <laughs> chats about the, uh, the goods and the bads and the importance of building community. So let's dive in, Sophie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think we have a few um, things to, to chat about housekeeping wise. Um, first and foremost, today we're going to be talking about five main things. So we'll be defining what community means. Uh, we'll be talking about the difference between an audience and a community because that gets really confused. And a, like, I totally get why, but I know that's probably one of my top questions as a community strategist is, um, things coming to me where I'm like, you're actually building an audience at this point. Um, then we'll talk about the benefits of community from a business perspective and why you might want to start um, thinking about incorporating a community in whatever you're doing. And then we'll go into a little bit more practical in terms of like, how do you start building a community plan? We have a framework there that we'll be sharing with all of you. Um, and then running through an example of how you might uh, think about it if you're a specific type of business. Awesome. Yeah, and feel free to ask questions throughout and I will help uh, guide them to Sophie and I will also be in the chat bar. So in the chat bar, that's for conversation, saying hello and connecting. And then a specific question that you want to ask is there at the bottom. So yes, exactly, just like here. Exactly. Um, but the awesome thing with Crowdcast is that when you ask a question and we answer it, it actually will timestamp it for people. So you're doing everyone a service by asking any question you have. Um, and yeah, just in case something goes wrong here and the screen freezes on your end, just you know, sign out, reload the page and come on back. If that happens to us, we will do the same. So if there is any technical glitches, just know that our plan is to get back on as quickly as possible. So don't panic, we'll just keep on going. Yeah, I think that's all. Anything else to add, Sophie? I will add that uh, the session is automatically recorded. You'll be able to come to this exact same link to re-listen to anything that we are talking about. So if there's something you want to revisit or a slide you want to see again, um, rather than having us flip back to it um, and, and talk to it again, we can actually, um, you can actually just go back and listen to the recording after. Definitely. And we do at the end have a resource that uh, a template that you're going to get and you'll get that through email. So, um, yeah, watch how to do it and then you'll actually get a copy of how to fill it, uh, of what to fill out. So awesome. Let's dive right in. All right. So let's start by defining um, what a community is, just so that we make sure we're all on the same page tonight and that you guys are understanding um, where the information you're getting is coming from. So when we're talking about community at its very core, and we're talking about a space where people gather around common interests or a cause. So there's no one that hangs out in the group if they don't have common interests or um, a common agenda. And in terms of community in the business space, that could be that they're following um, they're interested in the business's mission. They're interested in, um, maybe some of the people that gather around that business or they're really in a situation in their life where that business actually really speaks to them and they want to be able to gather with other people around that common interest. Now, in terms of community versus audience, remember I told you at the beginning that um, <laughs> there's a big difference between it and Jamie, I'm sure you've seen it too and mm -hmm. some of the community stuff that you've done. But really, um, when you're talking about an audience that typically um, is people that are gathering around a couple places around your business. So one of them is social media. Um, one of them is your email list and one of them is probably also your website or your blog if you have one. Um, the, the main hallmark, if you want, of an audience is that these people are following you and they're looking at you as sort of the leader of the pack. They're, they're taking your lead on the conversations that you, they should be having. They're listening to you and there's not a lot of two-way communication between it. You might get the odd message or you might get the odd exchange from people, but they're not necessarily connecting directly with 
one another. You're kind of the person leading all of the conversation. Whereas in a community, uh, the, the, the interactions are a lot more different. You, they're decentralized. You may actually be the one who started the community, but you might not be the one sustaining it. So people will be connecting with one another. Let's say uh, Jamie and I are in the spring community. We may have started in the spring community because we believed in its mission and we were interested in the business, but eventually we connect together and then we make friends in that community. And that really starts creating that net that sustains that community for the long run. And I always tell people, if you wanna know whether you're building an audience or a community, ask yourself, if you stepped out of the room, would people still be connecting with one another? And if the answer is no, then the chances are you've built an audience at that point. Um, whereas a community can actually start sustaining itself for the long run, which from a business perspective can be really great uh, because that means that as a business owner, you don't necessarily have to be the one uh, leading all the time. You can actually let people have those interactions around the topic that you are gathering them around. Definitely. And I, just an example with Thrive. So our newsletter list that goes out to a large group of people and we feel like it's a win if we have one or two people write us back and that's a pretty big list. And then our community platform, we have way less people, like a 10th of the people. But when we put out you know, a message on that community board, we get tons of interactions, people start talking with each other. So when you think about audience versus community, they might they might be the same size, but for us, our community is much smaller, but there are loyalist fans, there are real people. So when we got into crisis mode with COVID, um, you know, we still sent out the newsletters, but it was really all hands on deck to get our community feeling connected and there for each other and that we have not had drop offs even with COVID happening. So just a little example, a little case study for, you know, both are important, but uh, the community might take longer and feel different because you're earning those people, but they really do stick with you. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is, um, and Jamie, I'm extrapolating because I'm not in your community, but I would mm -hmm. bet that um, if you went in the community on any given day, even if you are not posting as the leader of Thrive, there's conversation happening and there are friendships forming and there are business relationships forming within that. Um, and it's happening a little bit more organically. Do you, do you guys see that? Oh, definitely. Like when we first started the community, it was really us leading the charge around getting conversations, but now I'll go, you know, a few days without being on there and it's really neat to see what's happening. And then I might add a couple comments, but it's definitely, uh, it's it's me actually i'm participating in community rather than leading now which is amazing yeah, which yeah. is great and that's a great place that you you want to get to as a community leader is um in the first little while and kind of jumping ahead and going uh beyond the 101 but the first little while in a community what you'll see is that you as the leader are having to seed a lot of those conversations just because there's not a volume i mean the analogy that I give, and Jamie, I think it was actually with you in conversation, is if you think of community as inviting people to a dinner party because you want them to connect with one another, um, if those people are complete strangers when they walk into your house, you're going to have to do a little bit of entertaining for a little while until they get comfortable with one another. But once they get comfortable, you can step out of the room to look after your turkey or whatever you're cooking for the dinner and the conversation still keeps happening. And I think from a business perspective, that's what you want to facilitate where you, when you're actually using community as a tool for your business so that you're not creating another job for yourself. You're actually using it as a place to connect with the people who care the most about your business and your mission, but also that can, you know, chat amongst each other and, and make those connections and also find value in one another because you shouldn't as the community leader be seen as the only source of truth that, you know, the, the biggest value is in all of the people that join you at that point. Definitely. Yeah. 
So we've talked a little bit about these benefits, but um, there are four like key benefits that um, community brings to a business. As we said, and as you'll probably see in some of the slides moving forward, this is not a short-term solution. Community does take time to build, but what it can actually give you is a huge amount of competitive advantage. Um, so first and foremost, it gives you an ear into authentic communication with your, your tribe, with your people. Um, you know, most people, once they settle into a community, feel very comfortable giving feedback or giving ideas and offering up um, things. So as a small business, that can be super invaluable because of the fact that um, those conversations wouldn't necessarily happen if they're just receiving your newsletter or, or talking to you on social media. Um, and those can be, you know, I have seen people get feedback in community that have led to new services and new products and new revenue streams for the business that honestly, the business owner have said, has said, I just didn't even, that wasn't even on my radar. I had no idea that that was something that my customer wanted, or I hadn't even thought of putting it that way. And it's so much easier for me or whatever else. So that's the, the, the first thing that I think of when I, I'm thinking of community for businesses. I think the other one also is that most people that I have seen use community well are investing a little bit less in marketing in the long run. Doesn't mean that they're not investing in marketing. If there are marketers in the room, please don't <laughs> come yell at me. We need both. Um, but the amount of money that they're putting in to acquire customers becomes less and less because they're building a group of people that believe in them and that will actually start naturally promoting the group or the business or, or whatever else. So that can be a really big asset, especially for smaller businesses. Um, and yeah, Olsi mentioned that the marketing process has definitely slowed down. And absolutely, I think, um, especially in these times right now, um, it's important for you as a small business owner to have that link to your customer to be listening because their needs are changing. You know, when we when we went down into lockdown in, in um, March, April, we were listening really hard because the needs of the customers that we serve were changing minute by minute. And I think that for most small businesses in this crisis in particular, was the case. And it doesn't mean that other things won't come down the line that you'll need to have a really close ear to that moving forward. Um, you know, we talked about the word of mouth, creating that customer acquisition, and also just strengthening those relationships so that you're building that trust and, and like factor um, and, and making sure that the people who are following your business are in it for the long run. Definitely. And with with that it just makes it so that when crisis hits those four keys are you're set up to be resilient so you know whether crisis is something like covid you know crisis happens in business for my business we had a cash flow problem that had nothing to do with a covid crisis but as you know we're going to give an example of a restaurant later on it's like that restaurant could flood and then community is there for you so crisis can mean lots of different things and community can really help with that yeah and i'll give another example um we had in our our local community a shop that produces paint for artists um and they there was a giant fire um, downtown so overnight that business lost its location its ability to operate um, and its entire livelihood. Um, within two weeks, the community rallied together. They had a new shop open, they had new materials and new machines, and they were back in production. And that was 100% through donation, through people who had joined their um, community on Facebook to learn how to, um, it's, it's paid for furniture for artists who create beautiful pieces of furniture. So. Um, they had joined the group to learn how to use this paint to make beautiful things. And at, in the end, they're the ones who came through for the business at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just reading on the side here. Oh. So far, we have an audience rather than the community, with the exception of an episode in the last session when we all, with encouragement from Spring, tried to give advice to one of the participants. Yes, in this particular, you're talking about this webinar. Absolutely, it is not a um, community 
um, <laughs> building effort. <laughs> I think though that's such a good point. To the great thing is that once you kind of start to learn the difference, you start to see it, and you can see how other businesses are doing things. So that is definitely so. These webinars, um, how we've done them in spring, they are actually to build an audience and to get more people to know what we're about. And it's very yeah. uh, information uh, information forward. So we're it's like we're kind of telling, and you're all listening. And so what Sophie's been working on for spring is exactly what we're talking about today: is a community platform. And that is a space for actual conversation and networking. Um, so definitely uh, love that you picked that up. That's yeah. perfect. You're, you, you're, you're learning you're fast. fast. I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And absolutely. And, and um, definitely that's, that's part of, as Jamie said, what I'm, I'm building next for spring and, and um, literally opened the doors last week to a very small group to make sure that the community space was comfortable. It was uh, delivering what we need and we'll be opening it up to a uh, larger audience a little bit later. So uh, yeah, absolutely. You're our early adopters. I love it. You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think, and this speaks really to the point of, that's on the screen right now, the fact that community is about them and not you. So now that you're banging on our door saying we want community, we might have to start moving a little quicker. I know. So on, on getting that stuff up. <laughs> because we're listening. Um, but really, that's the other benefit of it is that this actually starts um, giving you a platform where you're not necessarily sitting on it being the entertainer or being the person who has all the wisdom in the room. It allows you to shift that role from being that in the spotlight to actually controlling the spotlight and shining it on the people that are making the community what it is. Mm -hmm. So as the community starts evolving, you can actually start shining the spotlight on members that have special skills that they might be able to share with the group to add value, or you might be able to share a story from someone who's been taking the advice in the group and doing great things. Um, so that really allows you to shift your role. And for a lot of people who are more on the introverted side of thing, they love community because it means that they're not always at the center of attention, but they're able to add value by highlighting everyone around them. And it's actually been very unexpectedly a great tool for those introverts in the room because of that, um, <laughs> because of that um, trait of community, which has been really great. So uh, yeah, everyone's still banging on the door to get a community. We're going to have to like get on that very, very quickly. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, let me, oops, I changed my screen. I can't flip it. There we go. So as you can see, and as demonstrated from the conversation happening in the chat, People naturally want to belong in community. As humans, we we really are wired to be connecting with people. And I think we're seeing that more than ever right now with the whole situation with the pandemic is that people have been isolated for a long time. It's starting to affect their mental health. It's starting to um, create a little bit of a spring fever. So when things are reopening, they're, they're, they're getting in community and they're connecting with people. And that's just a basic human need. So I think from a business perspective, you can leverage that without taking advantage of people in gathering them around things that they really um, start caring about so that they feel like they're part of something. Um, and I think, you know, with all the comments we're getting right now of like, yeah, we'd love to connect and share ideas. That's exactly that spirit that you want to start embodying when you're looking at creating a community around your business. What do your customers care about? What is the long-term mission of the business? What is your why? And how can you get people um, together that have that common interest and will have that passion as well? Um, so that, you know, you're not focusing the community necessarily on one single product, but you're actually looking at it from a holistic perspective. And I'll give a big example here because it's one of the most obvious ones in terms of community. Um, hopefully you guys are, are familiar with GoPro cameras. I think everyone is at this point. They're all over the world. 
um, they have a very strong community of adventure seekers. They, they've connected with people and, and it makes 100% it, it makes sense because of the fact that their product is for people who are, you know, going down on the slopes and climbing mountains and doing all those things. So the community that they built is actually not around their camera. It's around the fact that people are seeking adventure and wanting to share it with people. So that's the nuance here when you're looking at community is that your audience, you can build 100% around your brand. Like it could be a community for spring. It could be um, a community for a local restaurant because people love the brand and they want to keep going there. But it's much more powerful to think of what is behind that brand? What do they stand for? Like spring is about impact in the world, creating um, change through entrepreneurship that's about a belief that people will stand beside. Um, so when you're looking at how can I create community around your business, think of that. Like what are the values that people resonate with when they're speaking with us? What are the things that they stand for that can be really, really useful for us? Um, and, and that's where your community stands. And Go ahead. you can kind of track that back to your why, why you started the business and yeah. What values did you have? And then you created your business to solve that and create impact. So it's it's really lovely because you're give you're allowing people into your vision, which is which is an awesome thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if it hasn't been clear so far, you know, and I think I just saw a comment that actually speaks to this, you know, safety in numbers, as they say, with community, and that's absolutely true. Community is a tool that can help you weather the storm when things go wrong uh, by finding you support really quickly, by having that team already built that can help you rather than going out to people who might not know you and asking for that help. Um, but the, the, the drawback of it is that it's not an immediate solution. So, you know, if we're looking at the crisis that's happening today and saying, okay, I need to build a community, Yes, you do, but will it help you necessarily today if you haven't actually nurtured that environment? Probably not. It's more of a long-term solution that can be coupled with marketing and a few other strategies that you guys have been learning about through these sessions um, mm -hmm. to help you get through it. But it definitely is something that if you build consistently and consciously can help you in the future be more resilient and have that uh, backup def definitely in line. And I think Jamie, you had an example from Thrive because you guys have been doing some work recently. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just about building this resilience as entrepreneurs. And so right now, when we look at this crisis, we're thinking, you know, we've we've talked in these webinars, things that need to happen immediately, and then what sort of these long term solutions. So just give you an example. Um, so Thrive has been around for five years now. At about the three year mark, we were doing all in-person meetings in Vancouver, which meant that we had interest from other people online, but we weren't digitized yet. We didn't know how to do that. And we were afraid that it might ruin the special community that we had built in person. So then when we hit our crisis, which was cash flow issues, we had taken a loan and things were just money was going out the door so quick. And so we did the sort of analysis that we've talked about, you know, in these webinars is like assessing and we assessed that money was going too quick. So we cut expenses. And then we also started to look at what was working the best and what kept working was these monthly meetings. And we realized the monthly meetings are working, but we need to scale. So we realized to do that, we needed to figure out how to do our meetings online. So by doing them online, the meetings happened, and then we created an online space for our members to have that community aspect happening there. So that was all two years ago. So now we're two years later. At the beginning, you know, the community was it was us putting a lot of work to get people talking and stuff. But then, you know, within a year, it was really moving. So now we're two years later and COVID hit and nothing in Thrive changed business wise. So everything had been already done to be converted online. And because we had community, actually what happened is our members leaned in and said, we need this space more than ever. They actually saw the value. So 
people leaving the program actually slowed during COVID than would be typically. We have a few people in every group leave just the nature of our business. And so that has been a really interesting case study to see. So it's sort of a marker of deciding that community, you know, makes sense to build in your business and then kind of, you know, thinking at that two year mark, what does that look like? And, you know, from my experience, it is what saved us during this time for sure. Yeah, and that's really interesting. And I'll, I'll point out that for Jamie, access to the community is actually a paid thing, right? They pay for the membership. Yeah. 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 So, but it doesn't need to be necessarily a paid community. You can actually create the same type of effect in a totally free group. Um, you know, with the example of the paint shop that I was talking about earlier, their group is 100% free and it's actually supporting their product because they're showing people what's possible with the paints that they sell. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, people love it because they're getting ideas. That's where the value exchange is, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting ideas on what they could do next for their ne next project, et cetera, et cetera. And when the business actually started being in trouble and that fire hit, they had already done the legwork of making people believe that their business was worth it. And they created this movement without even knowing it behind them that really supported and lifted the business. But that mm -hmm. model was 100% free. So. Yeah just to make that that distinction in case you guys heard program and in cancellations and things. And you're like, well, my business doesn't really have that in it. Yeah. Um, it's a hundred percent possible to create that effect, whether you're in a paid community environment or in a free one. Yeah, definitely. And I think we were afraid that this would be the first thing to go because it almost seems, you know, like a luxury to be part of a paid community, but actually what we realized, like, that was completely wrong. It was that this is a time where people want to invest in the things that like build them up and that they feel connected to people. So um, either, yeah, free or paid, there's, it's still, it's going to build, build your business to be really resilient. Yeah. Perfect. So shall we move on to thinking about the practical side of community building? Uh, yeah. I think definitely we've talked a lot about uh, what community is, what it can do for your business. Um, you guys have probably gotten the point at this point that can be a very, very valuable tool. But what we have on the screen right now is a tool to help you guys start thinking about the type of community you want to build with some of the core elements that you need to actually consider. Um, don't be scared. Uh, I know there's a lot of words on the screen. <laughs> We're going to walk you through every single one so that you understand how to think through this. Um, this is also a handout that you will receive at the end of this session so that you can actually work through it on your own and start thinking about how this may apply. But what we thought we would do is um, take a look at this canvas um, and break it down into chunks and also show you with a fictitious business, what that could actually start looking like so that you can actually apply it for yourself um, in your own business afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. I think sometimes we see community and we feel like, oh, it might not fit for our business. So we tried to pick something that was, you know, a challenge and, but shows how much we believe it's possible. So we picked a restaurant to work out this this map with. Yeah, and more specifically, a restaurant that is interested in locally grown um, and, you know, sustainable um, practices in the restaurant business. That's very Vancouver of us. Um, <laughs> but it had some really interesting uh, cases that we thought would apply even um, to the Albanian market at the same time. So um, there's really a couple steps that you need to think about when you're starting to build community. And the first one we've talked about a little bit already, and it's aligning your goals and, and values with those of your customers. So this is a step that I um, go through with in any community that I start, but it's something that um, most community builders don't think of at first. And what happens is when you're not aligning your goals and values with what your business needs and what your customer needs, um, you start building communities that don't respond to the needs of one or the other. So I've seen both cases where it's like people uh, don't want to stick around in the community because it's not quite delivering what they're expecting. But I've seen the reverse where a business owner goes, you know what, I set up this group. 
and I think it's great, but I've created a second job for myself because now I need to maintain it and I get no business results from it. So I'm not really sure why I'm doing it, but I keep going because people think it's great. Um, and that's not what we want to create for you, especially when you have to be careful with your time. So when you're the first thing you should start thinking about is what do you need as a business? Obviously, sales is usually one of the needs when you're building a business community, but um, it could be other things. It could actually be, I want to listen to my customers more. I want some ideas on products. Like there's a lot of um, sub reasons, if you want, that mm -hmm. you need to just lay out on paper and be able to say, this is this is the truth. No shame in what I need. These are the things I need to get for this this community to be sustainable for me. And then on the flip side go, if I'm talking to my customers and I'm thinking back on what they tell me they need, what are some of the needs that I know they will need to get from that business? So from the, the paint company that we talked about earlier, people wanted ideas on how to use the paint to create beautiful furniture. So that was one of the needs that needed to be responded to in the community. That gave them a hint for what type of group they were going to be setting up, what type of content they were going to be sharing, what type of people they would be looking for to include in the community to make it engaging. Um, and that really helped. So in the restaurant example, here's what that could look like. Um, and that's the first box here. It's defining success for everyone. Um, so from the restaurant owner's perspective or you, it could be that you want to sell more meals. You want to share the joy of good food because remember you're about locally grown, you're about um, sustainability. Um, and most restaurant owners are, are in it because they really enjoy the experience of eating and that's very valuable for them. Um, and then the third one might be that you want new meal or service ideas um, without having to like poll customers all the time or put out surveys. From your customer's perspective, what they want is to have a great meal they want to find new places to eat. Um, you know, knowing one great restaurant is great, but sometimes they want a little bit of variety. So they'd love to be able to get other ideas as well. And they want to spend more time with friends and family. So one thing you'll notice in these success definitions is nowhere is your customer saying, I want to learn more about the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, that's just not an objective that most people would naturally gravitate towards. So it's really important to not get your feeling hurt by that, but just be like, that's where they're coming from. They're looking for good food and a good experience with their family. I'm looking to sell more and to get more ideas on how I can do business better. Mm -hmm. They sound completely opposite uh, at the beginning, but there's some intersection there and that's where the community can actually start taking shape. So you'll see it as we start filling out that um, that becomes clearer and clearer and less vague and more practical um, as we move along the canvas. Yeah, and just being really clear that thinking through, you know, what do your customers really want? So there's some things that we want them to want, but, um, and that might be, as we've said in other um, webinars, you know, getting on the phone with your customers, but asking them like, why do you come to my restaurant? And so just making sure that we're not, we're being very careful not to put words in their mouth so that our, so that it aligns in a way that that would make sense to build community around because that's how you get things not working. It's either not working for them or not working for you. And we just don't want to waste our time here. So awesome, Sophie, keep going. Yeah. And I would also say just last piece on that is that to figure out what your customer really wants, you do need to talk to them. Um, you do need to have conversations with them. And you also need to pay attention to the things that they're not saying when you interact with them. So whether it's feedback, um, in this case, in the restaurant, if they're hearing about meals or they're hearing about the experience, like what is the customer really saying when they, you know, tell you maybe that the food wasn't up to par that night or that they're looking for another option? Like what is really underneath that? And the best way to find out is to ask good questions. And we could have a whole other webinar on that for sure. Um, but uh, definitely think about that and don't necessarily always take the first answer they give you as the truth, like keep digging and keep asking other questions to help you um, really get to that root. Yeah. So the second step 
um, that is also really important is once you've aligned what you want from the community and what others may need from it is to really define the transformation that you're promising them. Um, and this always, every time I talk to someone who is not familiar with community building, this always feels odd to them because they're like, I'm just asking them to join my community. I'm not wanting to transform their lives. But the truth of the matter is, is anything people are joining will transform them in some way, whether it's big or small, and it could be tiny. Um, there is something that happens when they come into your community as a new, new person. Um, and then by the time they leave, they're typically not the same person. Or if you've done your job and if they've stuck around for a long time because there was value in what you're doing, you've transformed their lives in some form or another. In our restaurant example, um, if we're helping them, um, you know, choose better restaurant options or um, in Thrive's case, you know, if you're helping women be better at uh, running an art business, that's a transformation in itself. And you need to be clear when you're setting out in your community, what is that thing that you're not necessarily promising outright, but like, what is the typical journey that someone will follow as they're learning about things in your community and as they're connecting with people and what can you expect them to come out um, at the other end looking like? Well, um, yeah. I'll give you a quick example, just in terms of Thrive that's really suited here is that when we started the business and the community, we just thought, oh, we want artists to reach their art and business goals and that would be their transformation. And then as you spend more time in your community, then what we realized is that we had members that were getting there very quickly because Thrive was working. So, but then we thought, well, then what do we do? So the thing is with community, you have built in customers discovery all the time. So that led to us starting our Thrive leadership team. And we actually had members that could mentor each other, which led to us being able to do more groups and have more sales. So it is an awesome thing, defining one transformation. You just need to give it time because then you can say, oh, you know, it worked, now what do we do together? And so it's just really beneficial to have that small but mighty audience that you are constantly just creating new experiences for them um, to be transformed and then you know making sure it works with you whether they're paying you for those experiences or they're coming back to the restaurant over and over again um, just always keeping those things aligned yeah and i can give another example too of um a designer that i worked with she she um designed uh, graphics and patterns that go on like fabrics and books and like all kinds of things, anything that has a pattern on it, she designed the pattern. Um, and she started a community where her transformation is she wanted to help women who were not considering themselves artists turn into pattern designers so that they could create a sustainable income for themselves. Her audience was mostly stay at home moms um and what she so that was her transformation she said i want them to go from being art curious to actually running a successful small scale you know we had a comment earlier oh actually it was from jamie small's great small but mighty um but it was a small scale but that at the end of it they were selling their patterns successfully and had a business and an income for themselves that was the trajectory but once we started looking at what is the transformation that needs to happen from to take them from that like stay at home mom curious about income and art into, oh, they're running their own business. That doesn't happen overnight. There are steps in the middle. And what we started figuring out is that some people were entering the community. Actually, the majority of people were entering the community because they wanted to learn how to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. They had been making art and they had heard they could do things with Photoshop to make that art better. And that was the entry point was like, literally when we started unraveling it, the journey looked like, I wanna learn Photoshop, look at all these cool things I've done, what can I do with them? Oh, look, someone's interested in buying my work. What if I just try this one sale? To that was fun, how do I do it again? 
to, oh my God, I think this could be a business to how do I run my business to being a successful business owner. Um, and once they got clear on that, then all the services she could offer around that started sprouting out. So Jamie, in your example, you know, the, the, the mastermind and the maybe live events at some point or whatever else, you can actually start really making some really cool decisions about what direction your business needs to go in next. Mm -hmm. So um, I saw there were some spoilers already in terms of what the restaurant may benefit from as we're building this canvas. So let's go to that example uh, to give you kind of a more brick and mortar uh, feel. So, you know, in this case, we talked already about the fact that most customers are looking for restaurant ideas. That's probably the, the main trigger point. They're looking for ideas of where to eat. They are interested in new experiences. Um, and then by the end of it, the restaurant may say, you know what, I would love for them to leave with um, a love for local restaurants that they're avoiding large chains, um, that, you know, they're putting their food back in the economy, that it's a more sustainable uh, practice. They're asking questions about where their food is being produced. They're now conscious about wanting to eat better food um, and that they're bringing those sustainable practices back home so that, you know, in turn, it's a bit of a cycle there. Um, and, and that is a big transformation sometimes when you go from someone just looking for a suggestion to like, oh, I've changed my lifestyle or what I'm doing, but it's absolutely possible. And, the, and for a restaurant like this, they can go, okay, what are the steps in between? How do I get them to start thinking about those things? Um, and that will actually be the next part of our canvas, but I'm sure someone might have some answers. So I'd love to see like some of the suggested steps or things that you can actually see in between those two uh, stages of being that might be something that the person, you know, experiences or that the customer actually starts experiencing. Does anyone have any ideas on what those could be? As people are thinking about it, I just wanted to add to this that, you know, just clarifying our community versus audience and, and sort of the, the difference about community it's quite interesting to me, Sophie, that one of, so what this person is selecting is that they want to help people looking for restaurant ideas. As a marketer, or if you put on another hat of your business, this would seem really counterintuitive that you're going to help your customers find other places to eat as well. But when you put this on for transformation, and when we're talking about people to the people, to your community and helping them grow, the amazing thing is like community you have so much freedom because you can help them learn and you can really educate them. And at the end of the day, it's so powerful because over time they always come back to you because we always come back to people that have helped us. And like, we see them as sort of the cornerstone of our journey. And so that's what you're becoming for people. So just to mention that it might feel very counterintuitive, but when we go right to the person and transformation, that really shifts our parameters. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And it def definitely does feel, I, I liken this a little bit to when social media first started and people were like, why would I want to talk about my day all the time? Why do people care about this? Um, it took a little bit of a mindset shift to be like, hey, when I share things about behind the scenes in my business or what I believe in, people start really... Uh, being drawn to that and being drawn to be. And in this case, it's the same thing is people are drawn to helpfulness. They are drawn to people who are not afraid of talking about the other great businesses in their community because they feel that the advice can be trusted. And it's not just about me, me, me all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah. You turn into the go-to place in the hub. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that becomes, you know, that's valuable to people because they start seeing you as the honest source of truth, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the person that will always have a good suggestion, even if you are not the answer to what people are looking for. Yeah. Um, so absolutely. I think that was a, a, a great comment. So let's talk about the next step in this canvas, which is where you can actually start taking that transformation that we just talked about and 
starting to create an experience from it. So I alluded a little bit to it when I said, once you know the steps, you can start deciding if a mastermind is great for you or if a delivery and takeout service is great or whatever that is, depending on your business. But there's really four key components that you need to think about when you're designing your community's experience. And I say designing very loosely because um, if you over design, it just feels like you've like over planned your dinner party. Like, oh, this person must sit here and talk to this person and no one else and they must have these conversations and, and all that. And it feels robotic. So um, you want to plan loosely and you want to put some ideas down, um, but you don't want it to be like so strict that people feel confined in boxes as they enter your community space. So there are four things. Uh, the first one is definitely thinking about conventions. So what are the standards that you want people to meet? in order to be able to access the community. So for Jamie's community at Thrive, you might wanna to talk to like, who are the people that you serve and, and what criteria do they need to have in order to be a good member in your community? Yeah, definitely. And so with Thrive, our business is around community. So, but we have different levels that will help. So we do have a Facebook group and that Facebook group, anyone can join. So it's, uh, female, non-binary, gender fluid artists is you have to be. So there's a little tick form where it's, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm an artist. I'm in a visual artist. Join. Great. Then we have our online network, which is paid. So that would be that they're willing to pay. And for that, they have to, again, fill out, be these tick marks to join the community and be working towards being professional artists. And then our third level is our mastermind program, which are these monthly meetings. And that there's an application form, there's a cost, and they have to do a phone interview. So that has more levels to make sure that they're committed, they're gonna show up, they're gonna help other people. And a huge thing that we talk about is if they value helping others, that they're not just there to take, take, take. So what's really important for us is all those levels we had to think of like what are our values for each one and again that transformative experience each one of those levels they're going to have a different transformation so the facebook group maybe the transformation is more about just contributing to a group and sharing their art and then the, our online network is about much more sharing business skills and talking and showing up it's much more interactive and then the meetings is sort of the top level you know you have to come to every meeting it's in it's online but in person and uh, so yeah it's just very important that for each level we have a series of standards before anyone can just join in because you got to protect your community too so you got to protect the space that you've created yeah, and I think definitely that's a great point. You want to make sure that um, there is some kind of convention, even in a free group. So in the example of our restaurant, for in instance, it could be as simple as screening for people who are part of that local community mm -hmm. and have an interest in sustainability and, and local foods. And that could be done very easily with a few questions. But, um, you know, they there's still a need there to protect that environment, even though it might be a free access community or, or whatever else. Uh, we don't know yet, we haven't filled out our whole canvas, but um, definitely when you're thinking about conventions, it can be as simple as it needs to be people between the ages of 20 and 35 who have a certain income and who live in these areas, or it could go as far as what Jamie described where there's a bit of a screening process that happens and a phone call and a quote unquote interview, I guess, for um, permission to access that group. So the transformation will actually lead those decisions for you to be like, what do people need in order to get from point A to point B? What do we need to facilitate for them? Yeah. Um, so that's the first point when you're looking at the experience. The next one is definitely looking at the shared experience. So what are some of the hallmarks of the experience that you're creating? Um, in Jamie's case, she said, you know, there's a free group where people can actually start sharing art. There is, I forget the second level already. It just skipped my mind. Like online network that is, they do pay for it. Yeah. 
and yeah, they talk more about business strategy. Yeah, and we and just to say too, like when we think about effort and time as a business owner, for that one that they're paying for, we're constantly creating resources. We are we're feeding content. So that's sort of the exchange there. Our content is being exchanged for them to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. And then in your mastermind, you have those in-person sessions. So the experiences are very defined within the different paid tiers in a free community. It could be simply having a schedule of when you're posting what. Uh, so maybe Mondays are when you post your newest restaurant recommendation mm -hmm. or uh, Fridays are when you post uh, discounts to some of the, the neighborhood restaurants or whatever else. But what are those things that you can offer within the community that help people along that transformation um, and that you can repeat and do on a regular basis? So that's kind of creating your schedule of what what will be happening so that there's actually it's not like people are just sitting there waiting for things to happen and wondering what's going to happen next. They can actually count on certain things happening. Well, and keep in mind too, as we talked about being, you know, introverted and so online community can be really awesome for that. Think you're still the host. So it's like you have people there and it's that icebreaker game and then to get people chatting. So your shared experiences, you really want to provide something for people to talk about so if it's just this empty space what are yeah it's great people are there but people are going to leave because they have no parameters to share and get to know each other so that's really important like we have a resource that comes out um you know twice a month and we then talk like we do type we type about it and then we ask people questions about it so we have this shared experience around the new resource that comes out yeah, yeah, and that's a beautiful segue into the third piece, which is the content piece. So the shared experience is really around like the schedule and the things that people will do together physically, whereas content is about what information is most valuable to them and what can you share with them to help them along that journey. Mm -hmm. So for uh, Jamie, there might be things that you're sharing and, and I'm putting words in your mouth. So you let me know um, yeah. there, but there might be things that you're sharing in the free group that help people actually start considering joining one of the paid options mm -hmm. that are in there. And I don't know if you have any examples on the fly of something you've done in that regard. Yeah. Um, well, all of our, re so we have on the paid one, it's called the thrive resource library. So it's a whole bank and it's sort of, we've looked through what we think are the best resources. So then on, we created blog posts that summarize, they're free on our website, that summarize some of our top resources. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the post, we say all of this information is from our resource library. And on at the library, you can get more, you know, by doing this. And then for our free Facebook group, we will often just post the blog posts on there and be like, have you checked out this latest resource? Because we want to create value to every level of community, but we also want to make sure that, you know, people know that if you're willing to pay and join the network, you're going to have a different transformation. So we're kind of leading them through, you know, it's also your customer journey. So just thinking, but I will say this is after five years. So start with one thing. Yes. And then as you work with your community, the only reason we have all these pieces is because over time, one transformation would work and we're like, okay, they need another shared experience. And then, you know, that became our business model. So just, it sounds, I'm talking about something that has a lot of tears, a lot of thoughtfulness, but it's very much um, something that happened over time. And I think what I want to leave you with is inspiring you to see what can happen when you do spend time on community and like how much it can help grow your business. So don't be yeah. overwhelmed. By don't that. be overwhelmed and think you need a resource library. But I mean, in, no. in the example of our restaurant, again, um, those resources could be very simple. It could be like, at first, people need to see the food that we're offering so that they start being curious about it. And being that they want um, their user to have an interest in sustainability and local food, that picture could actually start having a caption underneath that explains where the food came from and why it's important to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. That could be as simple as that. 
Yeah. Um, and, and really it's about aligning again, that journey of like, oh, we want them to start with, hey, I want restaurant ideas. And it could be that you decide to feature dishes from different restaurants um, for a while, really at that point. But the, the point is that the content that you create should really be guided by those aligned values and that transformation that you're trying to um, instill about uh, upon people. And then the last piece is really the roles within your community. So you as the leader doesn't mean that you need to be doing everything in that community. And in fact, it benefits you to start saying like, who else can help and who help else has skills to share? And the great news is, is that within communities, you start having what, um, when for, for people who work in community all the time, we call them super users, but those are really, that's a fancy word for people who are raising their hand and saying, I want to help and I want to contribute. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's someone who says, hey, I have a favorite recipe that I wanna share with the group on a Facebook Live, or um, I have a review that I want to provide from the latest place that I went to eat, um, those are all things that you can actually start defining as roles so that you end up not being the one having to do all the creation yourself. You're bringing in people and they're feeling value in exchange. So they stay longer and they help you make the community even greater. Yeah. And that's definitely as things, as you spend more time and as your community grows, the roles can be added. So I, I would say too, don't get overwhelmed at the beginning when there's seven people and you're like, well, two of them are going to be moderators. You know, that's, that's a lot of your community. So uh, as you see people engaging and then you start to say, okay, like, how can I promote you to do this? How, what would be of value to you? So. Yeah, absolutely. So this is what it looks like on the canvas. We're going to start in the upper kind of rightish corner um, red box there. So in terms of conventions, um, some of the things that we identified for this particular co uh, community is that we'd love for people to be like avid restaurant consumers. So we want them to be eating out at least once per week, whether it's by themselves or with their family. Um, they need to be adventurous with their food. So they love trying new things. Um, and that could be very easy for screening in terms of asking like, what's the latest, uh, like what's the craziest food you've had recently? Or, you know, some fun question like that. Um, we'd love for them to be interested in eating organic foods and we want them to be eager to learn about food in general and food production. Um, so those are some of the things that we identified here as conventions for this particular um, community. And those were important because of the transformation we want to facilitate. Yeah. And I think too, to remember that um, we're at such a great time with technology. Yeah. So it's just, you know, back in the day, it would actually be gathering people and, you know, that, that opt in to do that and spend their time that way is high. Whereas this can be, you know, tick box questions to screen and get people into the community really quickly. So I just, I think it's a really exciting time to be working in this way. Absolutely. And it also means that um, if you want to lean in on marketing for the community to attract more people who have a like mind, there's a ton of targeting options for things like ads and things like that, that allow you to really zoom in on that particular set of people. Um, and this is where marketing can be really useful, especially as you're starting to build the community to just start promoting that, hey, there's a group available for anyone that um, mm -hmm. wants to join it. Yeah. So now that we have our conventions for this restaurant, let's look at what a shared experience could look like. And in this case, we identified four things too. So one is we want users to regularly, regularly share their meals with the group. Why is that important? Because we want people to be interested in seeing food and talking about it and things like that. Um, we also want people to be reviewing and recommending one restaurant per quarter. And that's a loose objective, but it's like, hey, this is something that to me tells me that they're, they're engaged, that they're interested in the topic that we want to be discussing and that they're taking action on it. Um, the last two eating out at least uh, once per month and then learning about uh, sustainable practices um, every quarter. So that's kind of a you objective of just being able to say like, hey, once per quarter, I'm going to share a story of sustainability 
Uh, maybe I talk about the farmer that creates the meat that we use in the restaurant or whatever that is, but that actually is moving the business's agenda a little bit forward at the same time. Um, but those are the things that I want to be doing in order to create a ritual and an experience that is uniquely us um, within that space. And I think it's really important to put uh, timelines around it and yeah. numbers to it, just especially at the beginning, because it's going to help you with our next step, which is your content schedule and what you want to be putting out there. Because by knowing your goals, you know, and you can reassess these goals at any time, but putting when they need to happen is going to give you the framework to really make other decisions about the community. Yeah, absolutely. And it also makes things measurable for you as the owner um, or the leader of the community, I should say. I was thinking of the restaurant owner. Um, but as the leader, this helps you actually quickly assess with yes, no questions. Are we achieving the goals that we want? yes or no? And if the answer is no, what do we need to adjust to align things a little bit better for both of us again? Mm -hmm. um, so as much as you can, especially in the shared experience section, um, put some timelines to it so that it actually starts being really measurable and will help you with some of the things coming up in the canvas. Yeah. Um, on the content side, you see some ideas here. Obviously, restaurant reviews are some of the content we want because it's one of the objectives that we want people to be meeting is that they're sharing reviews, um, maybe even some chef interviews. They can talk about their process and start instilling the importance of the art of, you know, making good food, uh, talking about why sustainability is good for them, inserting that message more and more so that people start picking up on it and understanding why it matters is really, really important in the journey that we created for this customer. Um, so food photos again, and recommendations are great. Eventually probably people would love to see some coupons and some deals or some gift certificate options or something that allows them to try new experiences that allows them to go out to new places at a discount so that the risk is a little bit lower for them. Um, maybe you want to create, uh, some meal invitations so that people are actually trying food together in your community. They're not just doing it on their own and that there are some stories about some of the restaurants that um, your community has been visiting and, and going to. So the, some of those, those ideas may not all end up in the community, but that was a brief brainstorm of what is possible within the experience that we want to create. Well, and what's so awesome about this is that many times we I've been in conversations where it's like, what marketing initiatives should we do that are new? Yeah. And you have ideas like this, but when you have community, you can move on things so quickly because then you just pull restaurant stories and that becomes in on your Instagram, like a cool little segment around that. You know, for Thrive in particular, we started sharing our community's artwork on our Instagram. And then we thought, oh, we want to do some testimonials. And in the past, that would have taken a long time to collect. Well, we just posted into the group and said, if you want to do testimonial, click this form. And we got, you know, 15 within a couple days, which allowed then marketing to move really quick and get that up on the website. So these ideas with community are really neat because you can test things out, see what sticks, and then they can always repurpose some of this stuff for your marketing and other ideas. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the beauty of having this community is it kind of gives you that, um, I don't want to say container, but like that space is what I was looking for. That space to be able to really see what people are drawn to um, and then go, how do I replicate that in my marketing initiatives moving forward? Yeah. Um, so, you know, for instance, here, here, if meal invitations start being a, a really big thing, like people are loving the fact that you're organizing uh, a, a dinner for everyone together to share a meal, that could actually be a really good clue for you to stand out in your marketing efforts as well. And maybe you make a family meal night for the restaurant or whatever else um, you can actually start pulling from. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that once you have those three pieces put together is you'll see the roles actually start shining through really bright. Like if you need reviews, um, there could be a role within your community of being a reviewer 
like an official community reviewer that goes to different restaurants. Um, there could be the role of being a meal host. So you could partner with other restaurants in the community to host dinners at different places. Um, you obviously have a group moderator if you have an online community. Another role might be a restaurant partner. So again, there might be some neighboring restaurants that want to create some kind of package with you um, that allows the business to flow amongst you. Um, and there's obviously also sponsors. There might be some food companies out there that are interested in sponsoring local restaurants and providing money um, that you can then use in your business or um, in the community itself. So those are some of the potential roles that can come out of just having thought through all of those initiatives. Yeah, and, and one thing to add to that, so I I think being, I'm very practical, I'm A-type <laughs> entrepreneur, and um, so when I was going through roles for Thrive, what I found was I was constantly like, well, if we ask someone to do this, they need to get this, or like, do I pay them? And I found it very overwhelming of these roles. And I yeah. tell you this because it shocked me so much people are so excited to take on roles within community. And so we have a leadership team that actually ran meetings. So we pay, we pay them because their time is being paid for. And then within the community, we have a whole group of moderators. I, we've also had um, artists within want to run events like art crawls with, for the group. And it's just been so wonderful to see because, and the feedback I've gotten is that people want to belong. It's a safe space for them to be a leader when they might not know. How, it's hard to know how to lead when, if you're not running something or what role to take. And so, yeah, it just, it's been such a wonderful lesson for me because it was just so different than I imagined. Um, so I would say, you know, when you look at this list, open your mind to as your community grows, these people are going to show up and be there for you. And, and again, as the owner, you feel way less alone, you feel way more supported by your community. So it's a really beautiful coming together. Yeah, and I would also say that some of these people will naturally start standing out in your community. That's why these are kind of ideas of what you might want to start building in um, and some of the needs that you see as a restaurant owner um, of, of what might be needed based on the content you identified people wanted and things like that. But um, these people generally start naturally standing out. So you will have people who naturally help you control the conversation and you will have some people who offer up like, Hey, I know how to do this. Can I teach it? Can we organize a night where I'm actually teaching that thing? Yeah. Um, and someone else will say, Hey, I want a recipe book club. Can I set that up? Yeah. Um, and your job is to say, yes, you may. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I'll give them ownership yeah. that is within parameters, obviously, yeah. but um, to, to leave that space for them. And as the community leader, you can also reach out to people who you think would fit in those roles. Say, hey, your restaurant reviews are great. Would you like, would you want to work something out where you're doing them on a regular basis for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and whether it's paid or not, like they might just want a discount on their food when they come into your restaurant or yeah. they might want uh, to do it for free or whatever else. So don't yeah. feel like you need to pay all of these people because um, a lot of them will actually just naturally step up and want to be helpers if you've done a good job of building those relationships. Well, and it's also amazing, like with community and also then if you have leaders in your community, the fun you can have with um just like special experiences. So there's nothing different about it. Like we don't need, I would always go to the, you know, the big idea, like we'll have a conference for artists. And it's like, oh no, they, our group just wants like a mingle night. And that doesn't cost me money. Like maybe I'll get some wine or some cheese, but you can make this stuff where they, people just want to be gathered and be together and a part of something. So I just think it's, it's neat to see how this evolves over time. Yeah. So before we move on, I just want to see that the chat's been really quiet. Have there been any questions about this section in particular so far that we can answer before we go into the more technical side of the community? Yeah. So we have about 15 minutes left and that will kind of take us to the end. So make sure if our questions are coming up, um, be asking 
as me and Sophie wondered starting this if we were going to be able to have enough content and that makes me laugh Sophie because <laughs> we love talking about this and now we're at the 15 minutes the yeah end. we're saying we have 15 minutes left yeah <laughs> yeah so keep sharing in the chat or ask a question and then we'll we'll keep going I'll keep going but I'll come back to those questions because I'm not seeing any so we're being either extremely clear or um everyone's just thinking through all the content we've we've put your way um, and yeah. thinking about your, their next move. Yeah, we've blown so many minds on here. There's not even enough mind power to ask a question. I get it, I get it, guys. <laughs> I hear ya, I hear ya. All right, let's talk about the last piece. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the last piece. Um, and then that's in choosing how you'll deliver. So, so far on the canvas that we've created, We've talked a lot about ideas, right? We've talked about what's possible for content and for experiences and for roles and all those things. Um, the, the last piece is really choosing more of the mechanical side of things. So how will you be communicating with people? How often will you be talking to them? Um, what platform will you be using? Uh, is it a free Facebook group? Do you need something more advanced? Uh, people are always surprised when I tell them there are literally like hundreds, if not thousands of options for community platforms. Facebook is not the only one. Um, so definitely start thinking about uh, one of the biggest things that I, I come across is people pick their platform first before having done all of this thinking. And then they're stuck designing an experience based on what the platform can deliver, mm -hmm. which may not be the experience that people want at all. So it's much better to start thinking first and foremost about what do we need to create and then go what platform will enable that. Um, it's such a simple concept, but it's one that people, um, for some reason, they just want to go straight to what do we use? Well, and I totally get it because it's just that feeling of like, how am I going to do this awesome idea? But if we yeah. start back to why, you know, and why and what does that look like is so important because the thing is that what I found is when you go platform first, you create something super complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you want to use the platform to its fullest. And actually when you go to like, what do my people need? Yeah. Oh, they need somewhere to post, you know, it becomes much more simple. So I think that's such an important suggestion, Sophie. Yeah. It's an, it's a, it's, it's an, just one of the cornerstones that I see all the mm -hmm. time where people just jump in and, and go, what is what is that platform? What are we doing? Where are yeah. we going? How, how, how? And they're not thinking about the what, the where, the when um, beforehand. So please like sit on your hands if you have that urge and you haven't thought through your community experience first, just sit on your hands and don't pick a platform until you've done the rest. Um, and then the final one is success metrics. So for me, um, when I look at a community, I look at it as a team member. So that means that if I were hiring someone, they would have a job description and there would be metrics against which I measure their performance. I do the exact same thing for a community. With the canvas that we've just run through, it'll become really clear really fast what that community needs to do for you and what you actually will consider to be a successful implementation of it. Um, and those metrics you should be reviewing on a regular basis, at least quarterly. Um, and, and if you don't like the idea of doing it quarterly, at least once per year, mm -hmm. um, but, but keep asking yourself, like, how is this serving me and how is it serving the members? And is that balance still there or is it starting to tip one way or tip the other? Yeah, um, and it, it's so yeah. important because if, you, if both those aren't being fulfilled in a real way with numbers and, um, it's just there's so many like community is such a buzzword it's almost like why i don't like using the word anymore because it's so on our tongues of we need community and it's like but there's so many cool and community initiatives that start they're over complicated they don't actually give value to both sides and they don't last long like weeks you know and they're done so taking the time to plan this well and really think through the time and energy you're willing to give, how you're going to see if this is successful. These are the things that make it sustainable. Because like I said in my example, you know, this is where Thrive is now. It's been two years of being really dedicated and measuring and thoughtful around this plan. So 
that's a long time. You don't want to stick with something that's not useful to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a great point. And I always go back to um, a business owner that I spoke to once who had a community. She had 12,000 people in her community. It was a huge group. Wow. And um, people were clearly interested in what she was offering. But when I spoke with her, she said, I am so tired. Mm-hmm. I have spent five years building this community and I have been away from it for exactly three days because I was having babies. Wow. And I was like, that is not what a community should be doing for you or your business. Like you shouldn't feel like you're tied to it to the point where you can never step away. That is just not the hallmark of a good engagement. And really at the end of the day, when we looked at her community, that was a self-imposed feeling more than it was reality. Mm -hmm. Um, Her community was thriving. People were talking to one another, but she felt as the owner of the community that she couldn't step away. Mm -hmm. Luckily we fixed that and she was able to take a long vacation um, without Mm -hmm. that. So you don't want to build something that gets you to that point where you feel tied down. You always want to make sure that that balance is there. Um, so that you're offering value, but you're also getting value back and that you enjoy that piece of your business. Mm -hmm. And it's not like this big, heavy burden. So that's where these three steps in particular start really um, coming into play. Yeah. Um, And they're at the bottom of the canvas right here. So um, in this restaurant example, for instance, we decided that we were hoping to do daily posts in the uh, community, at least for the first little while, while people were still getting warmed up and deciding um, if they wanted to stick around. Um, We also wanted to have uh, weekly updates to members. So that was actually just pulling some of the most valuable conversations they may have missed in the community itself, in the group, um, and actually highlighting them to invite them to come and join the conversation. And then um, we also wanted to do a little bit more marketing as well. So on social media, we were sharing highlights from the community to help attract more people to the group and help it grow. Um, On the tracking side, we decided to start really, really simply. So how many people are attending uh, the group dinners that we were talking about? Um, We decided to start with that apparently. And then how many coupons um, are being redeemed? So in some of the the coupons and deals that you're sharing, like how many people are actually taking them and using them in restaurant? Um, That that gives you an idea from the business side, how well this is working for you. And in this one example, we've we have shown you could have four other ways of tracking. So oh, absolutely, this is not to say that this is how you would do it. You would look at, you know, what are your goals as your business and then coming up with a few. But I think it's important to show how simple and but how powerful this can be, because those two things did not exist as business initiatives before your community. So it community can bring a lot of new revenue and new ideas. So, yeah. And that's a great point. Um, and, and it, it can be, you can actually choose to track only parts of what you're doing for a little while, because those are the most important things to you and then revisit some of those elements later. Um, so it's always a tug of war between like, what's going to be the metric that I follow versus what are the metrics that I could follow Um, And I know I see that a lot when I help people understand what Google Analytics can do for their community or their website even. They start getting amazed with all the things they can track and they try to track all of them Mm -hmm. and then they get completely overwhelmed and they don't track anything. Um, So it's really important for you to be like, what are the top two things that if this happened, I would be thrilled for my business? Yeah. And to monitor those and always be asking like, how can I actually start moving more towards supporting those goals. Yeah, I always think of the question of, what am I going to do with this data? So if I know this number, what action does it allow me to do? And quite often, I don't actually know that answer. It's like, I figure out how to get that piece and then what's my next step? So I've started now going a little bit even backwards, like, okay, what's the thing I wanna do? Then what data do I need to know? Then how do I get it? Whereas I was going the opposite way, so. Yeah, and that's a great tip. And that definitely, especially as small small business owners or startups, we want to be thinking about what do we care about right now and focus on those things only. 
Um, and that can help you actually make some choices. Like if you get to the tracking piece here and you say, well, I care about these two things. And then you look at the plan and you're like, hmm, the content's not supporting that goal. And the shared experience is actually like, there's too many things in there. I should start with just this one thing. It helps you kind of rebalance your canvas here to say, okay, am I really going towards what matters? Mm -hmm. um, and again, going back to that balance between what they need and what you need. Yeah. Um, so that's how you start looking at your canvas. Once you filled it out, you can actually start spot checking your strategy by going, okay, if I compare this box to that box, do they, those align? Do those feel like they're supporting one another? Mm -hmm. um, so, and then the last box here you saw um, was basically picking your platforms. So for the restaurant, they wanted a low cost solution that was really accessible to everyone. They chose to go with the private Facebook group, which is super easy, super flexible. Uh, well, not super flexible, super accessible, mm -hmm. um, maybe less flexible in terms of creating a custom experience, but it's really quick and easy for that restaurant to use. Um, they need an email platform to send out their updates and they need their social channels to be aligned with that. So those were the three like main things yeah. um, there. But again, like you're looking at, okay, if we're convening that way, how are we using those to communicate? Is the tracking, are we going to be able to track using those methods? How do we do those things? So this canvas really starts helping you, A, put some structure and think through the steps, but also helps you validate that the idea will work and support what you need. Um, yes, and we'll post our LinkedIn's in just a minute. Uh, and then also think through, like, does this make sense? Does it feel too big for me? Where do I need to scale back? Where do I need to uh, maybe ramp up um, so that you can ha actually have a really successful start? And I would also say with that is once you've then looked at your platforms and your communication plan is that do you have time to do it in your business yeah. with everything else you need to do? And you might say, I have time to do this piece right now. I have time to start the Facebook group and get that going. And then my second piece is to add an email. So just be careful in your enthusiasm to not promise the world and then realize you don't have time for it, but rather build slowly and add as you add as it starts to benefit you and you feel like there's some value being added. So this could, this plan that Sophie's made for for this restaurant and this canvas for you could be over a year you're gonna do these things. And I highly suggest taking it slow because that's where I see community projects fail and amazing initiatives fail for businesses because it's too much to add on their plate with everything else. So. Yeah, I mean, think of it as a plant, right? You plant the seed and then it starts growing bit by bit. So this is the same thing. Like this canvas can lead you to a vision for your community, but really I always go back to what matters most now and what are the things that I can handle doing at this moment so that you don't end up overwhelmed and with another job <laughs> uh, cool. of running a community that really is taking away from your main business. Mm -hmm. So this needs to serve your business first and then be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some people have, have done that and found that the community actually becomes the main business after a while, and that's great but that doesn't need to be the goal. So this is a no pressure canvas. It helps you create that big picture vision so that you know what you're working towards, mm -hmm. but absolutely pick little sections, pick one thing per section if you want to say, these are the things that I'm focusing on now um, to make sure that it's sustainable and, and works with the business that you are building. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up. Any other questions before we go? We've put our LinkedIn's in the chat and you can also connect with Spring. I'll throw Springs in there real quick. Sophie, do you have any last words for us? Um, is there another slide? <laughs> I is there, there, another slide? there might be one last slide, which <laughs> is the, there we go. Community oh, does not just happen. Those are good last words. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think we've done a good job of, of, of imparting that wisdom throughout the session today. And definitely, you know, community can be hugely valuable for your business, but we want it to work with your business and not against it. 
Um, and I love that the restaurant example was easily chewable. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it takes a little bit of work, but if you put that planning in first and really start asking you yourself some hard questions and some honest questions, um, around what your capabilities are and what you want to be offering, it can be hugely valuable for your business. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what ideas come out of this group in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I think there, there can be some really great stuff. So please reach out to us. Let us know if you start anything. We um, are happy and, and always thrilled to hear what people are doing with the knowledge that we impart. Definitely. And we better get to work getting our spring community going so all of you can join. Yeah. And uh, I've heard that you you will will figure an invite out pretty soon for you guys. Yeah, definitely. Thank you all for being here. We're going to end the session and we so appreciate your time. Have a great day.